Online threats to shoot up a Terrytown residence leads to a traffic stop, discovery of an AK-style rifle, and felony charges for two Scotchbluff teens. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, two 18-year-olds are in custody after they were caught driving by a Terrytown home with an AK-47 and making threats to shoot up the building. Tyreek Perez and Ramon Molina Jr. are each charged with terroristic threats, use of a firearm to commit a felony, and possession of marijuana after an investigation by Scottsdale Police late Tuesday night. Court documents say officers were called to a residence on South Street in Terrytown regarding a Ford SUV driving past slowly multiple times and were provided with screenshots of social media conversations involving both Perez and Molina talking about the incident. Officers stopped the vehicle on South Beltline Highway, at which time the driver, Perez, advised there was an AK-47 style rifle on the floor between the seats with Molina saying it was his and he had the magazine, which was loaded, in his back pocket. Both were arraigned on the charges yesterday afternoon in Scotts Bluff County Court. Well, a South Dakota woman facing a variety of criminal charges for stealing a pickup from a Scotts Bluff bar and leading law enforcement officers on a high-speed chase in February will not be standing trial. 24-year-old Ashley Flood led police on a pursuit after speeds reached 95 miles per hour before she returned to the scene of the crime. On Tuesday, Flood pleaded guilty to charges of theft by unlawful taking and operating a motor vehicle to avoid arrest. In exchange for her plea, two other misdemeanor charges were dismissed. She'll be back in court on May 25th for sentencing. And the case against the former Dual County clerk accused of using a county credit card to rack up $18,000 worth of personal purchases resumed in court earlier this month. Polly Olson is charged with three counts of theft by unlawful taking, stemming from activity that occurred between 2019 and 2021. Defense attorney Marn Chalupka has filed a motion to change venue due to Dual County's low population and allegations of theft of tax dollars, Finding a jury of 12 who could fairly and impartially hear the case without wondering if their taxes are affected is unrealistic. Judge Patrick Hang has scheduled an April 21st hearing to decide whether the case will be tried in Dual County or Lincoln County. We'll have more news right after this. Swipe right, swipe left, endlessly searching. Finding the perfect match isn't always perfect, but it can be when it comes to finances. Nora found the perfect business loan. Jenny opened her first savings account. Grammy loves her checking account. We found a match for Wilson Farms. The Sandersons were matched with a mortgage. Regardless of your financial situation, Platte Valley Bank will match you with the perfect solution. Find your match at Platte Valley Bank. Morrill County Community Hospital and the behavioral health providers are here to help. Amber Dean specializes in mental health care, which includes medication and therapy across a person's lifespan. Melody Lysi helps people deal with a wide range of behavioral problems, from depression and anxiety to child psychiatry. Our dedicated team is committed to you and our community every time. At Morrill County Community Hospital, Bridgeport, Nebraska. Exceptional care, right here at home. Welcome back. Nebraska Secretary of State Bob Evden was in Washington, D.C. this week to testify before the U.S. Senate Rules and Administration Committee. Ranking member Senator Deb Fischer invited Secretary Evden to discuss the 2022 general election and Nebraska's recently adopted voter ID requirement. Evden says Nebraska's election results were stellar, and after a hand count audit of roughly 10% of all ballots casts, only 11 discrepancies were noted. Five of those were ballots marked too lightly, and the remaining either misfiled or misplaced. To the best of my knowledge, none of the variance was attributable to machine error. So in Nebraska, in my view, our election officials across the state did an exemplary job of conducting an accurate and secure election. 
Evden also discussed challenges to election security and how Nebraska will soon begin enacting the voter-approved ballot measure to have an ID required to vote. Well, a free screening of a film about the bread doctor in Torrington will be shown this Saturday at the Midwest Theater. Marta's Gift follows the story of a baking school instructor who ends up teaching Torrington's Dr. Esdon Flukiger. He and his daughter Eleanor, who has Down syndrome, go on to open up the successful downtown Torrington's The Bread Doctor Bakery. In doing so, that allows Eleanor to have a productive and engaging life at the bakery, all while bringing the father and daughter closer than ever. The movie again is free and open to the public and will begin at 2 p.m. on Saturday at the Midwest Theater. And the Nebraska Department of Labor announced Friday that Nebraska's preliminary unemployment rate for February 2023 is 2.3% seasonally adjusted. The rate is down 0.2 percentage points from January's rate of 2.5 percent. State Labor Commissioner John Alvin says the number of Nebraskans employed statewide was up 1,765 over the month, while the number of unemployed was down 1,864. Alvin went on to say the state hasn't seen an unemployment rate this low since June of 2020. March preliminary and February 2023 revised labor force and non-farm employment data will be released on Friday, April 21st. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. We're going to see some off and on rain showers here through the evening hours. That turn to snow as we get towards morning tomorrow and overnight tonight. Uh, rain will turn over to snow as temps fall. And it is going to be an unsettled week of weather coming our way, really the next 10 days or so. Probably through the Easter weekend, things look to be unsettled. We'll see rain to snow, then colder temperatures tonight into tomorrow. It'll be warmer but windy this weekend, and then another stronger system looks to be on the way for early next week. Yesterday, just 39 after a morning low of 23 degrees. As you take a look at our almanac, we had no precip yesterday, a little over a half an inch below normal for the month, about four tenths above normal for the year. But we have some more showers coming tonight into tomorrow. And uh, some of that will be in the form of snow. You see another day yesterday with below normal temperatures out there. And uh, today was actually a mild and above normal day. One of the few we've actually had this month. And we'll see some more precip tonight into tomorrow. Tomorrow, our chances of precip pretty decent. They go down through the weekend. But starting especially Monday into Tuesday, uh, we've got good chances of seeing some rain and snow in here. And some of it could turn quite heavy at times, and winds are not going to go away. Tomorrow is going to be incredibly windy, and then uh, breezy to windy conditions really all the way through next Wednesday before winds start to taper off a little bit. Milder temps have snuck into the region today. The colder temps are not far away, though. A hodgepodge of temperatures here across the region. It's 70 in Beatrice, 46 in Rapid City, 36 up in Sioux Falls, Closer to home, we're at 52 in Douglas, 46 up in Casper, 62 right now in Scotts Bluff. Winds are out of the southeast uh, at 10 to 15, gusting at times to 20, even 30 mile an hour gusts. No wind chills really to be worried about as we have uh, milder temps out there. Let's take a look at uh, our forecast. Futurecast shows some rain showers. 
Can't rule out a rumble of thunder or two. Otherwise, we're going to have snow showers then taking over by early tomorrow morning. The snow will be around. It is going to be sharply colder. And areas just to the north uh, in the sand hills and the northern portions of the Pine Ridge going to see the heaviest snow with this up into South Dakota as the system pulls away. It is going to be very windy and raw, cold. Uh, Not a very good day at all tomorrow. Overnight lows tonight in the 20s and 30s. Highs tomorrow. 30s and 40s at best for anybody. And as far as precip goes, we're going to pile up a few hundredths, a few tenths of an inch, maybe even a quarter of an inch in some areas. And if that falls mostly as snow up and around the Shadron area, we could see several inches of snow pile up there by the time it's all said and done. And then we talked about early next week, that system coming in shows the potential to produce some very heavy snows. We'll keep a close eye on it, the European model, bringing in heavy snow to a large portion of our region, while the GFS model now keeps it a little further to the north. All in all, a very active forecast coming. Rain showers will transition to snow showers overnight, 32-year low. Tomorrow, it is going to be windy, off and on snow showers, especially in the morning. Winds are going to gust over 50, and we look for uh, cold temperatures out there only into the low 40s. We'll rebound into the 60s this weekend. It's going to be windy to breezy through the weekend. And then look what happens as we go into uh, Monday night. We see rain and snow showers. Rain and snow could be heavy at times on Tuesday. Highs only into the 30s. Low 30s is all for Wednesday. And the low 40s for Thursday. Normal high this time of year should be close to 60. So it's going to be very chilly out there for next week again. Now, sports from the FNBO Sports Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. Let's get to today's update from right here at the TV Sports Desk. Well, on Wednesday morning yesterday, leaders met over at the Hampton Inn for a presentation from the Huddle Up Group. Sports and the community was the topic. John Schmieder, the Huddle Up Group's founder and CEO, tells us what they're looking to do in the Scotts Bluff Gearing area. Um, we have been tasked by the community to uh, build out a sports tourism strategic plan uh, about how to attract more visitors and using sport to do that, which we've done over 150 times all around the country. Uh, and we're particularly um, adept at doing so in smaller and mid-sized markets, which is what we have here. Uh, and we've also worked with a bunch of the neighboring communities uh, in this region. So I think we're in really good shape to be able to offer something really good back to the community. This project with Huddle Up in the area kind of just getting started, but Schmieder says it's off to a great start. Yeah, we've had great feedback from the community, um, especially for a market of this size through uh, email surveys and phone interviews that our team has conducted. Uh, Seems like the community is collaborative and wants to play together, um, whether it be, you know, both cities, county, the different uh, sports people that were in the room this morning. Uh, It's really, really positive to be able to deal from that point of strength. Now let's get to the local angle with Scotts Bluff County Tourism Director Brenda Lisey on what the goal of this partnership is. We are looking for a sport strategic plan in which both communities can use so that we can try to build our sports market. Um, as we mentioned earlier in the presentation, COVID really changed things in the sports market, and we have discovered that we definitely need to build a stronger plan moving forward because no matter what the circumstances are, sports is always going to be very popular with our youth and in our leisure communities. 
Just recently, it was announced that the USA Cycling's Gravel National Championships big event will be held in Gearing this upcoming September, which seems like a great jumping off point and a feather in the cap for the region. The executive director of the Gearing Convention and Visitors Bureau is Carla Needen Streaks. Having a USA Cycling uh, sanctioned event coming to our communities and, and the first time we've ever had a, an event of that magnitude, we're going to be learning a lot of things about committee structures and budgeting and volunteers and all those types of things uh, for this big event that will start in September that's going to help us kind of learn as we go but be, be a great training ground for some of the things that we're working with Huddle Up that are coming to our areas in the future. After the morning presentation yesterday, the Huddle Up group toured some of the athletic venues in town as they start to get a better feel for what type of events might work best moving forward. The Huddle Up group will be back this direction for another meeting sometime in the future to present a more complete picture that includes their findings and thoughts on how the Scotts Bluff Gearing community can proceed. That is the latest today from right here at the FNBO Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the people you know and trust. Renewal by Anderson makes the best replacement windows and patio doors you can get. 
and they're among the best investments you can make in your home right now. Mortgage interest rates have doubled in just the last year. People are renovating their homes rather than moving. Renewal by Anderson windows and patio doors are a fantastic investment. Great tax incentives right now, five-star energy rated, significantly cut your energy bills and make your home much more valuable in a buyer's market. Snap that QR code, visit rbawyoming.com right now to start the conversation. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you plan for tomorrow while you enjoy today. Our personalized trust services can help you do just that. You've worked hard to build your legacy, and you want to make sure that gets passed on for generations to come. We offer the professional guidance necessary to ensure that happens. According to your wishes, we pride ourselves in being friendly and professional while offering a highly tailored full line of trust and estate planning services to accommodate you. You belong here. And finally tonight, Nebraska's ponds, lakes, and state recreation areas will be replenished with ample fishing opportunities this spring. The Nebraska Game and Parks Commission will be out in full force in both March and April stocking rainbow trout across the state. Earlier this month, crews were at Terry's Pit in Terrytown, the Scottsbluff Zoo Pond, Morrill Sand Pits, and Bridgeport State Recreation Area. In April, crews are expected to stock Fort Robinson State Park, Shadron State Park, as well as restocking the aforementioned spots. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.